thou has created them. So we need, basically in a nutshell, what the scripture is alluding and letting us know is that he is our creator. God created everything and all things that we're experiencing. But here's the thing, they were created for his glory. How do we take something that seems bad and use it for his glory? Well, you can use any example from the Bible. Any man or woman from the Bible that, that, that wasn't, that was born into creation, how God used them for his glory. You can go back, you know, Adam and Eve, even though they sinned, God still used them for his glory. Adam named all the animals. Eve was the first woman. She wasn't created from the dusty earth. She was created from man. She was created as a helpmate for man. There's so much revelation knowledge in the things that God did that we overlook and move on and want to call ourselves getting deep. How can you be deep in the word and revelation of God and learn the Hebrew and Greek and don't even know how to overcome the basic, basic things in life? Excuse me. We need to be mindful of the fact that the things that God has given us to be overcomers and take dominion over starts with our own personal choice and decisions to make him Lord of our decisions. That's number one. People who, who call themselves believers and live everyday lives and always wondering if God is going to do what he says he's going to do have not made him Lord. It's not a guessing game. God is absolute. He's sovereign. He's omniscient. When he tells you, commands you to do something, either from his word, his Holy Spirit, or through the preacher, teacher, whatever the case may be, that when he it's absolute. That's the faith we live by. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9 says, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world have been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. And the one thing I love about the way the New Covenant talks about creation is that now that Jesus Christ has been made manifest and can be revealed, we can give all credit and glory to God for becoming Emmanuel, God in us, the living Word of God, incarnate. You know, you have people, oh, Jesus ain't got, man, read your scriptures. I don't, that, that's rudimentary. Read your scriptures to understand what God's saying. That's why it's important for you to know the Feast of the Lord because the Feast of the Lord, the Spring Feast, speaks on, I call it the, the Old Testament Gospel, speaks on the manifestation of Jesus Christ in his time. Everything, according to Ecclesiastes, everything has a time and a season. Ephesians 4, 24, almost done here, I'm not going to share a whole lot, I got a lot of scriptures concerning creation and God. It's so important for you to understand these things. And all that get, get an understanding. The reason why you're being defeated and, and messed with in your personal life concerning rudimentary things is because you don't understand your creator. You don't understand the God that created you. He did not create you to fight all the time. He did not create you to, to, to strive and struggle and to go through things. He did, that's not what you was created for. I had to come to that realization upon being born again. I said, God did not create me to fight demons every day. That's not what he created me for. He did not create, create me to be poor. He did not create me to be less of a human. And when you understand these things, you will walk in a victory that God has really created you for. But until you do, you will destroy it for lack of knowledge. He created a tree, the, the, the tree, for a purpose. And going from the Midwest to South here in the Florida, I get to see palm trees and, and seeing how they have tropical storms here and the storms blow these trees, he made these trees to be, to be able to handle the winds. So if he created a tree in the south to be able to handle the winds and up north they're created differently, you mean to tell me he didn't create me to have victory? He didn't create me to live in victory? To be able to, to, be able to handle the storms of this life that I'm going to deal with? He could create a tree to do that, but not me? What kind of sense does that make? Makes none. Ephesians 4, 24. Whew, almost done. It says, And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So once you're born again, once you're born again, and you understand, there ain't nothing in your flesh 
ain't nothing in your body that you can do to be righteous and holy. You know it's all through Jesus Christ. You know it's, like I said, in the new covenant, he was made manifest, and that you put on the new man, you're born again, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So, I'm going to explain real quick. Righteousness, our righteousness is found in him. In him. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. You, you can't be righteous. You know, perfect example, I hear the Holy, Holy Spirit speaking concerning Peter. In one minute, Peter says, Thou art Jesus, the Son of the living God. And Jesus told Peter, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. In the next sentence, Jesus said, I must go to Jerusalem, where they will crucify me and give me. Peter going to say, no, you can't. And he says, get behind me, Satan. So that's why we can't be righteous. Because he got fearful that quick. He entertained the spirit of fear that quick. He went from knowing what the spirit was saying, who Jesus Christ was. When Jesus said, who, who, who do men say that I am? And it was revealed to Peter who <clears throat> Jesus was, is and is to come. In the very next minute, he allowed a spirit of fear to come up him, and he got rebuked. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. That's how we are. That's exactly how humans are. That's why we can't be righteous. Because we waver. I was, I was talking to some preachers. I'm going to share this, and it's sensitive. I was talking to some fellow preachers, and they, they know preachers who have died or passed during this COVID thing. And they're, 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 now, now that the mourning is over and the grieving is over, they've come to the realization that the way these preachers died is not the way God had intended for them. Meaning that there was other choices that they were supposed to make to still be here doing the work that God had created them to do. And people say, well, how do they know that? Man, come on. You think God don't reveal that stuff to, to, to people who walk with him and talk to him? God reveals those things to us. Not saying they're going to hell, but they still have work to do and to complete here. But because of some choices they choose to make, they're gone. You need to understand how powerful our God is. You do. And that, that's something that people fail to understand. A few more scriptures here and we'll be done for today. Colossians 1.16 It says that, For by him were all things created. He doesn't put a question mark. It's a, it's a comma. For by him were all things created that are, in the, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible, invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, all things were created by him and for him. Now, before people get all in their feelings... He said that all things were created for him by him. Lucifer was an angel in heaven who was apparently over dealt with the music. You know, you hear this off, often. He was created for the glory of God. He wanted glory for himself. That's why he got kicked out. The same thing goes on down here. God will give a vision to a man or woman for a ministry or a church, what have you. And somewhere along the way, they would decide to make that about them instead of about Jesus Christ. They put their name on the building, saying who they are, as if it's McDonald's or something, and they serve $30 billion. Then they put their name on the van and drive the van around. That's not, that, that don't have anything to do with Jesus. I know I may be stepping on your Holy Ghost toes. Let me help you understand something. I say this quite often because of the example that God gave me, which rings true time and time again. McDonald's has a franchise. And I don't care if you go in McDonald's in China, Africa, Egypt, or America, Saudi Arabia. Any McDonald's you go in, if you decide to, to join that franchise, you have to do your McDonald's the same way they do it everywhere else. You do. You have to do it the same way. If you don't, I don't know what their procedure is to deal with you. But if you continue to do things your own way, you will get put out of the franchise. You will no longer have it. The body of Jesus Christ is one body. You can't say, well, we do things like this and we do things like that. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. This is the word of the living God. This is what we go by. You can't just create what you want to create because you want to create it. 
just come up with stuff. Well, let's, well, let's do this and let's do that. No, the Bible told, let me read it again. For, let me let the word do the word. All things were created by him and for him. Flat out. There's no mystery in that. The glory, all the glory, and any glory goes to him. You, well, the Lord told me, the Lord ain't told you nothing that ain't in the word of the living God. I don't care what you say. Colossians 3.10, it says, And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. There's a whole lot, a little bit of scripture. And have put on a new man. We talk about being born again, which is renewed in knowledge. So once we get born again, we grow in the knowledge of who Jesus Christ was, is, and is to come. It's a dangerous place to be stuck and be just in a place. Well, this is what I know. No, we're constantly, things are constantly being, every time we hear a preaching or a teaching or read the word or meditate or any, any way the Holy Spirit can speak to us, we're being renewed in the knowledge of who Jesus Christ was, is, and is to come. I share this also when I preach that when I was a child, the scripture, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, did not mean as much to me as to when I grew up and all of a sudden had to pay them bills myself. Now I need the Lord to be my shepherd, so I shall not want. Because when I was a child and somebody else was paying the bills, it wasn't no sweat off my back. But now that I'm the one that's being used to do these things, now I have to have revelation on how it is the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. So what the scripture is letting us know is that we are renewed in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So when you talk to another believer, I, I, I have a tendency to saying, hey, what's the Lord telling you? I want to know what the Lord is revealing to people. I want to know what the word is. Not, not even what you have read in scripture, but what if God is speaking to your heart. And so often, they'll, 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 they'll read what they read for a daily verse for the day or something like that. And we need to develop a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we're if somebody asks us, what is the Lord saying to you? You should be able to say what he's saying to you right in that very moment. And if for, if for just in case he's, you feel like he's not saying anything or he's not speaking, what are you lending your ear to? What's on TV that's so important? Or what music are you listening to? Or what, what has your attention that's more important than a revelation that Jesus Christ is revealing to you so you could be more than an overcomer? And you could take dominion. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything else will be added. The Lord know he created humans. He know we weak. He know we get distracted. He know there's things that, that, that we feel like we need to do. And the Bible's why the scripture says he's put things here for us to enjoy, but he's always got to be first. One more scripture. We're going to get out of here like last year. Um, Revelations 4.11. And I'm going to end with a bang. Revelations, Revelations 4.11. I skipped over. I had about 30 scriptures, but I wasn't going to read all those. Because like I said, I'm just sharing some of the things that got it. Given me on this fifth day of my first fruit fast when I was fasting. <clears throat> 4.11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure... They are and were created for thy pleasure. There ain't nothing like anybody who's a cook. There ain't nothing like making a something from scratch. I'm talking about. I'm not talking about going and getting a box or heating up something. I'm talking about making something from scratch. And my aunt in West Virginia, she has a garden, and I can see the joy on her face when she goes in her. She plants something, and it grows. And and and, <laughs> and I can say so. I guess there's just some tomatoes in there. She tell me there's tomatoes because she grew them, and it's, you know, it's it's enjoyment, and excitement when you when you plant something and it gets water and God gives the increase, the manifestation of what you what He's allowed you to do. So can you imagine the pleasure that God has when He looks upon His His creation, us, and see the work that we have allowed Him to do on a Potter's wheel? You know, and people, let me say this because I hear the Holy Spirit speaking. People fall and they get upset. You would not have learned the snares that the enemy had put in your life if you had not failed or if you had not experienced some negative. And I'm going to say this and it's very weird. There are times when I have fallen short, fallen short of the glory of God. And as a human, I do. There are times when I fall short, I learned so much from that. Because I didn't know that that thing was a hindrance and bother 
was keeping me from the blessings of God. That's why open rebuke is better than the hidden love. You, you, should, you should embrace the fact that somebody's correcting you and telling you when you're doing something wrong because now you can get it right. I know people, and I, I really hate to say this, but it's the 100% truth. I know people who have been going to church 40 and 50 years who have not received correction and are still stuck on stupid. I, 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 I just got to say it. Well, let me use this word, who are stuck on ignorance. Because the Bible says, let the ignorant be ignorant. They refuse to be create, created, I mean corrected, and because they have so much pride, they refuse to receive rebuke, and they have not grown. That is a scary thing. To be faithfully going to a building, faithfully giving money, and not allow the process to be, be worked out in you. We go to get created, corrected. We live to be corrected. If you got a leader or somebody who's taking time to correct you, they are loving you. Look how many times Jesus rebuked people. Man, he tore the disciples up. He definitely tore the Pharisees up. He, he rebuked people. He corrected them so they can get straight and can inherit the things that he had for them. God has used me to tell people some stuff and they would get mad at me. I said, bro, I'm just a mailman. How many times you got mad at the mailman for bringing you a bill? Go outside. Hey, buddy, I don't want this electric bill. <laughs> What kind of foolishness is that? All he's doing is his job. He's bringing you the mail and he's bringing you something that you did. Hey, but you ran up this much electric. I don't know what you got going on in this house. What are all this stuff you got plugged on? Whatever you're doing. But this is your bill. And if you don't pay your bill, you're going to get cut off. So basically, if you don't receive the rebuke and the correction that God is trying to give you, you will get cut off from the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The manifested, physical, tangible blessings was worked out through them brothers. Jesus brought in, ushered in the spirit, the fire, Holy Ghost. Sinai, they got tablets. They got stone. Jesus, grace, and mercy. But you can't receive it if you don't receive him. And it comes with rebuke and correction. So that's all I feel led to share with today because it goes on into some other things. And I want to say this at the top, the top of the next page, which is going to be 1 6. It says, We have been taught wrong. <laughs> I look forward to talking about that because it's something that I understand had happened to me to a certain extent. And I look to the hills from which come my help. I said, Lord, why have you allowed these people to teach me you wrong? He says, Because he knew that I would not let it sit, that I would study. And that's how God, in his infinite wisdom, he knew that I would not settle for what people was telling me about him and I would study for myself to show myself approved. A workman that needed not be ashamed and rightly divide the word of truth. So it wasn't until then that I grew up and matured and realized until I know what my God, my creator is saying to me in particular, I'm not a grown person. I'm not a Christian. I'm not a mature person. I can't walk in the things that God has called and created me to do until I know for a fact of what he said to myself. I can't go based off, yeah, I, I love preachers and pastors, evangelists. I loved all the gifts that God had given us. But I had to know for myself. I ain't going to hell for nobody. I'm not missing my blessings for nobody. So I pray in the name of Jesus Christ you got something out of that because I definitely did. Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. We know, Father God, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Regardless if we're here in America or Italy or Africa or Afghanistan or Saudi Arabia, your word is true. You separated men at the Tower of Babel, 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 however you want to pronounce it. You did not, you did not separate us by color. You did not separate us by gender. You separated us by language. And at that particular time, the, the people who could understand each other went, went together. Because two cannot walk together unless they be agreed. We can't agree unless we can communicate. I thank you, Father God, that the way you allowed us to be scattered and, and, and Father God, and, and bring the earth the fruit that you desired, you also, in turn, brought us back together through you. Because we are your body. By way of the Holy Spirit, we can't come to you unless the Holy Spirit draws us. Because you are that spirit, Lord Jesus. And I thank you for bringing the body back together. There are those who you have assigned to hear this word, Father God, and react and respond to this word. You said that one planet 
another water. And Father God, you give the increase. I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ for immediate increase. This is the season, Father God. I was with a brother just yesterday, and he pulled me over on the road when I was driving, another believer. And he said he was on his way to get his phone fixed. His, his cell phone was broken. And he, he, he had me physically write down my number on a piece of paper, Father God. This is the season we live in right now. And Father God, you allowed that man before I was five miles down the road to call me from the same phone that was broken. And he says, God has healed my phone. From the conversation we had just had about me on my way to the phone shop to get my phone, that's the, that's the times we're living in. I had another man come and grab my titsy a, a week or so ago, and he says, you praying for me. Because they recognize the times and the season that we're living in right now. And we spoke about this time, and I feel bad for those people who are missing it. But this is a time, if you know somebody who knows God, who operates the gifts of God, this is a time to pull their TC and, and get what God has for you. I thank you, Father God, because this is a time you spoke about, and now it's being made manifest. We're only in, 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 in month two of this covenant year of 2022. The word two means covenant. This is a covenant year, and a, and a covenant year that, we, that, that things will be made manifest. And I thank and praise you, Father God, that you are a God that cannot lie, nor the Son of Man that you have need to repent. Everything you said you're going to do, and I'm going to stand on your word, backed up by the Holy Spirit. If you're somebody out there that, who, who do, that do not know this Jesus that we're talking about, you can confess, repent, and believe, and start the process of being born again and coming to this body and inherit the blessings that God has for you. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So if you need help, you can call us at 614-847-2057, 614-847-2057. I feel led to share that and um, or, or inbox or direct message or whatever you do. And I will do my very best to lead you to Jesus Christ. That's what he came for. He came for us, excuse me. He came for us. Well, God bless you, and may heaven's face continually always smile upon you.